Attention, 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 attention. Every other pho recipe that I have shared with you, delete them. Delete them all. This might be just about the best batch of pho broth I have ever made. But before we get into all that, I'm going to show you how to pick a bag of beef bones. Now that I have your attention, I can stop talking to this paper towel roll. This is what a bag of beef bones typically look like. I got this at the Vietnamese market and it's about 70 cents a pound. Each bag is about four to five dollars each. When you pick a bag, you want to pick a bag that has big pieces like this. You want to avoid a bag with little cylinder pieces like this. I don't know why, this is just what my mom taught me so I never questioned it. So now we're going to blanch. In a large pot, fill it with water, beef bones, and beef shank. Bring this to a boil, but while you wait for it to come to a boil, it will release impurities, scum, and foam. Make sure you skim this out. As soon as it comes to a boil, turn off your heat and immediately rinse under cold water. With your thumb, carefully scrub the bones to get rid of any bone fragments and hidden scum. Make sure you get in between the nooks and cranny. This is beef shank and again I'm carefully rinsing off any scum or impurities. Next we're going to char our onions and ginger. I charred mine in the air fryer at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 13 minutes on each side. You can also do this in the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 minutes rotating halfway through or on an open fire. The goal is to get our onions blistering and the outer layers to look burnt. You're also going to clean and prepare three stalks of scallion. Moving on to our spices, on medium heat and in a dry skillet, toast one cardamom pod, one cinnamon stick, cloves, two star anise, fennel seeds, and coriander seeds. Toast your spices for three minutes, swirling your pan around so your spices don't burn. After three minutes, place your spices in a cheesecloth or soup bag. Moving on to the fun part where we put everything into our Instant Pot. This is an 8 quart Instant Pot. If you're using a smaller one, then the measurements will vary. I start by putting the bones in at the very bottom and everything else can be tossed in at any order. Here we have our beef bones, charred onions and ginger, scallion, our spice bags, 2 quarts of water, and beef shank. You might have to move things around so it fits, but it should fit like a glove if you're using an 8 quart Instant Pot. I had to cut one of my onions in half so it would fit better. Into this Instapot, we're going to add 5 tablespoons of fish sauce, 2 teaspoons of salt, 2.5 ounces of rock sugar. If you're using granulated sugar, I'm not sure how much sugar to add, but I would start off with 2 tablespoons to be safe. You can always add more later. And 2 tablespoons chicken bouillon. Because our beef shank is in here, we're going to pressure cook on high for 30 minutes, NPR for 15 minutes. NPR stands for a natural pressure release, which means you're going to let your Instant Pot release pressure on its own for 15 minutes. For my model, it looks something like this with the letter L and number 15 for 15 minutes. After 15 minutes of NPR, switch your valve to venting. I like to put a towel over to prevent it from making a mess. Once it's completely done venting, remove your beef shank. Add one more quart of water, close the lid, and continue to pressure cook for two hours. As for your beef shank, you're going to cover it, refrigerate, and allow her to cool. Once she's cool, you can thinly slice. I'll have a part two on how to prep all of the meats. This video is just for the broth. After two hours in the Instant Pot, you're going to remove but reserve everything if you want to make a second, third, fourth, or even fifth batch of broth. We're reserving our onions, ginger, spice bag, bones, scallion, and all of the nitty gritty. Pour your broth through a fine strainer and with everything you've collected in your strainer, throw it back into your Instant Pot if you want to make more broth. I made a total of 4 batches because I invited family over for dinner and I like to freeze any leftover broth so I can have pho broth on deck for when I'm craving it.
This next step is optional, and I know a lot of you guys are going to say the Nick Mayo is the best part, but I'm cooking for my family, so I opt for healthier options. All I'm doing is filtering the fat out of the broth. There's many ways to do this. This is one of them. You can also leave the broth in the fridge overnight, and the fat will harden up. Just scoop it out then. But since we're eating for the same day I'm making it, we're using this method. There's also the bag method that I learned from my mom, and I'm going to have to show you guys that method another time. When everything's said and done, the Nuke Mayo remains. At this point, you're going to taste test your broth and adjust it to your preference. When you're ready, ladle hot broth over your prepared bowl of pho and enjoy.